Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the CCR YouTube channel. We continue with our program for Lent, Journey to Lent. And today, we have with us Vaishnav Bhaganza. I'm not going to say much about him because he is... There's nothing much to say. So, we just leave those credentials outside, aside, and we just want to look at the children of God. That's true. And as we journey through Lent, uh, Royston, uh, the gospel itself starts there on the first prayer days of the three tenets of Judaism, which is prayer, fasting, almsgiving. And uh, each one pursues it the way they know best. Okay. Uh, today, we want to take, speak about uh, prayer. And uh, for this, there are various aspects of prayer. We are talking of rote prayer, the rosies, for example, um, corporate prayer, masses, church, liturgical uh, preparation. We have uh, with us a family prayer, couples prayer, uh, assemblies and assemblies, and so on, various things. Uh, can you take us through some aspect of prayer which we can, out of the uh, you know, the ordinary, like something that we can look at for our benefit as we go to Lent. What would you like to, your insights on prayer person? When you start, uh, what struck me when you were introducing the three tenets was, uh, I remember Father Gerard talked about this word joy, J-O-Y. And he said, prayer is focusing on Jesus. Almsgiving is focusing on others. And fasting is focusing on you. Ah. So the J-O-Y of Lent are the three tenets and if we are able to remember it uh, then you know that Lent is calling us to really focus on all three dimensions. Just our relationship with God, so that's Jesus, J. Our relationship with others, that is uh, almsgiving and the relationship with yourself which is through fasting to be able to uh, really strengthen yourself and, and journey with God. That's, that's really very nice. I like yeah. this point. Yeah. And so... Uh, you know, that relationship is for me the key word, the relationship with Jesus. I mean, the, the, the doctors of the church, whether you look at Bernard of Clairvaux or Catherine of Siena, uh, talked about prayer as intimacy. Yes. And so it doesn't matter the form or the words. Uh, in fact, as we say in the corporate world, less is more. Probably the same is true of prayer. Uh, St. Joseph, of course, is a beautiful example of that. Not a single recorded word spoken by him. And yet, always attentive, always one with God, uh, always responding lovingly. So, how do we reach that intimacy? And there is no perfect way. You may decide that the person you are intimate with likes violence and and, and a uh, you know fancy dinner, and someone else may like to go with the person they love and sit on bandstand and watch the sea. So each one has to decide and and spend time with the Lord in the way that they know best. So what works for you as prayer may not work for me That's right. or may not Absolutely. work for someone else. And so each one of us is called to identify who is Jesus for me. And therefore, when in Matthew 16, 18, he said, you know, you are the Christ, son of the living God. And I said, Peter, you know, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, uh, but my father in heaven. Jesus was asking you and me, not only Peter, who am I to you? And that from there draws forth our relationship, our response in prayer. If I feel that, you know, I still need uh, a time of forgiveness and healing, then St. Catherine calls it the kiss of the feet. That's where the sinner woman was placed in her prayer. And she experienced in that kissing of the feet, the washing with her tears, the wiping with her hair, a complete intimacy with Jesus there. Or she talks about the kiss on the hands, where we are really in some ways climbing up that ladder of intimacy. And, and that is, you know, through reaching out and through working, uh, you know, and, and action and prayer in action. Or the final kiss on the mouth, which is true intimacy with the lover of the Song of Songs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, really, it's it's a buffet in a sense of prayer. It's not what suits you or what's good for you is good for me. Each one of us is called uh, to find out what works for them. And again, I want to say less is more. Yeah, you know, I want to ask you this. When you look at this buffet, this whole platter which you're putting out and you also mentioned it all depends on your personal outlook you know I would like this aspect of Jesus, Jesus. I will connect with that aspect I am reminded of uh, uh, Pope John Paul's document 
begin the new millennium where he said contemplate the face of christ you, you know that hey, can you just take us through that no that's interesting first i start with a joke there so there was this uh, now that we are in lent there was a on a friday evening uh, many of our churches have the stations of the cross on the walls of the church so the stations of the cross were over the parish priest was going to lock up the church and suddenly just when he was about to reach the door this man stumbled in and from the smell he got he knew this guy was nice and high and but the man ignored the priest and he walked straight uh, to the picture of the stations of the cross and then went to the next and then went to the next and then went to the next and the parish priest was really first of all first he was angry uh, and then he was amused and the amusement was because the man had started at 14 and then went to 13 and then <laughs> went to 12 So when the man came back to where the parish priest was, because he was in the center of the church, to continue on the other side, the parish priest stopped him and said, uh, "Is everything okay?" Uh, so the man said, "Actually, father, no." So he says, "Yeah, yeah. We meant that you're drunk." But the man says, "No, father." So he says, "What's not okay?" I think, father, I'm looking at Jesus, and I'm going, and he's looking like he's getting better and better. <laughs> and It was a joke which I heard, but I just felt, you know, this drunk man was actually contemplating the face of Jesus. He was looking at Jesus in the 14th station, and the 13th station, and the 12th station, and the 11th, and seeing Jesus is getting better and better. And we go through stations of the cross just for the sake of okay, a fa- Friday formality, a ritual, without really contemplating sometimes the face of Jesus. And so. you know in in nmi in, when pope john paul wrote that uh, he's really calling us to a deep level and it's so much you are a man of the bible wait, so wait, wait. Huh? this about it uh, for our viewers we say nmi refers to novo millennio inventi that's the uh, latin uh, title of that book beginning that new millennium yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for making greek and latin into english for me and our viewers uh but i was saying that uh, you know being a man who is in the bible institute and other things uh if you see the lecture divina again right. it talks about lectio meditatio oratio contemplatio and sometimes they say actio okay. so reading then meditating on god's word then prayer which is oratio but that doesn't end there in your 20 minutes or 2 minutes some of our young people i try to tell them even 2 minutes is fine even 10 seconds is fine but spend some time with god but uh it doesn't end there it goes into contemplatio which is through the day right. through the day i mean whether in your kitchen whether in the bus whether in the train hopefully with social distancing now but wherever you are uh you are called to contemplate on that word that has touched your heart that day right. and then putting it into action so uh the joy of prayer that's how you can pray without ceasing you can't sit and you know pray verbal road prayers without ceasing that's because that's you're it. cutting off and you're trying to stay always on the mountain top you are called to be people of the valley and the mountain because he's god of the mountain and god of the, the valley. valley that's right and so how do we take that word that has struck us out of that closed closet or closed room or out of the sanctuary and take it into the sanctuary of the workplace take it into the sanctuary of the marketplace take it into the sanctuary of the railway station that is a uh, contemplation which leads to then actio which is action okay uh, roshan i would like to ask you one thing uh, can you tell us on uh, what are some of the practices that you have if it's not too personal <laughs> i don't know i remember <laughs> digging, once digging, 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 digging. No, no, tell no, us I, about what you are doing. So, firstly, the I must say that everyone who is watching this has a higher time of prayer, a better quality of prayer, and definitely you know than me. Okay, so I am not an authority on on prayer, but I keep reflecting. There was a once a confirmation student who came after everyone had left and said, "I want to talk to you." So I said, "Sure." Uh, he had one earring, one ponytail, uh, but I, I was excited. So I said, "What do you want to do? Uh, what is the question?" So he says, "No, I want to read the Bible. Is it okay if I read in the toilet?" So I said, uh, sure, and he said, okay, and he went off. Now he expected me to react differently, like a parent would react, or someone said, oh, what do you mean, Bible? It's a holy book, Bible, Bible. But I didn't question him. I didn't even uh, judge him. He just went off. After two weeks, uh, class was over. He came back. He says, you know, in the Gospel of Matthew, I didn't understand this Bible. Uh, so I was quite intrigued. I said, so you actually read? He said, yeah, I'm reading. Uh, so I said, I would suggest maybe you start with Luke or start with Mark. Then you go on to something else because 
uh, there's a, maybe a better pattern in terms of how it was written. So he said, okay, give me a plan. So I gave him a plan. And then after a few weeks, I you know, got close enough to ask him why in the toilet. And he said, because people make fun of me at home. He said, you're reading the Bible, but you're not obedient. You're not doing this. You're not cutting your hair. You're drawing the shame. You're not taking out the earring. So he says that I don't want all of this at home. I'm happy. I'm reading my Bible. Uh, and oh, so nice. for me, yeah, so that uh, practices uh, have to be each one on their own. But for me, I'll tell you two practices. Uh, that one I started about a year ago when I was asked to give a teaching somewhere and I felt that I ne- have never knelt down other than in church uh, I don't kneel, I, I would be cool in prayer, God is my father, he loves me and all of that but for about a year and a half I have tried even if it is for a few seconds a day not in church to kneel in prayer and it's. I feel it has helped me because in some ways we also realize the awesomeness of God and that we are, uh, we are creatures and He is creator and He is all omnipotent. Uh, the other is, I then pray in the elevator when I'm going to office. And I'm sending to God. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I mean, I know that Revelation says lift up your heart, or come up here and that's where we can lift up your hearts in the liturgy. But I, I pray in that in a sense of offering my work also to the Lord because in the corporate world and you know as a CEO of a finance company and a multinational it's uh, it's challenging to live the gospel in the workplace and so the ability to bring all of that uh, to God's feet in a sense and ask him to bless so those are two maybe uh, kneeling down and Good. going in the elevator so that's nice but uh, I, I really want to take you some more and uh, uh, especially for the benefit of our viewers what happens when you fail? I mean, I, I don't think you have success all the time. So what would you like to tell our viewers? You're praying, you really want desire intimacy. You're taking certain steps, perhaps like the student, praying in the toilet, only something you're doing for yourself to get that closer to God. What if it doesn't work out? So I complain. <laughs> I, I complain about Jesus to his mother. I threaten him sometimes and say that I will complain to Mary if you don't listen. But but really, you know, we have it's such a childlike faith. It's, it is, it is, and uh, at the same time, I remember Fitz had once taught us a prayer, uh, which said, you know, uh, God, Your will, nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. And I find that that is really, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of holy people, and I'm not saying it in a, in a, but you know, people have God talking to them, and they journal, and they write. And I'm not that holy, but I genuinely don't have God talking to me and, and so for me that prayer is the prayer of Mary you know Lord I want this but let it be done me find your word Lord you know this is something I want but not my will but thine be done and if that prayer was good for Mary it's good for me if it's good for Jesus it's definitely good for me so I, I tell him what I want I threaten him sometimes to complain to his mother if he doesn't listen but I also at the end uh, try to and it's not easy but uh, to come back to the Lord and say, you know what, uh, you know why, you know what. And I remember Lazarus and I, sorry, but you know, they told him, Lord, but he's not well, let's go. And he said, no, and he delayed and he died. And like, that's the worst, right? And yet he said, this is for the glory of God. Yes. So the unanswered prayer probably is that push of faith for each one of us, for you and for me to say, Lord, you're not answering. That means you're going to glorify yourself even more. So. You figure it out. You're God. I, I think this is the huge gap that each one has to leap across. You know, that faith. You know? I, I know, Lord, I'm delayed, but I'm impatient. I, I need to wait. I need to trust you. And that's what faith is. You know, one of these mystics said, faith is to, uh, to believe that everything that God has said about himself is supremely true. I don't accept that. I don't see, I don't see the message. But because you say, I believe, you know, Amen. Jesus is the answer. You know, yes. Last words you have to say anything? No, Jesus know. is the answer. Okay. So let's say it in song. And Let take it back to Jesus to whom all intimacy belongs. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. 
Love him, there's no other. Jesus saves the way. If you have any questions in the corner of your mind, traces of discouragement, peace you cannot find. Reflections of your past seem to haunt you day by day. There's one thing I am sure of. Jesus is the way, hallelujah. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 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 Before I pray, I also want you to pray for me uh, whenever you have a chance. Let me pray together right now. Our Father, Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit, our Paracletos, the one who accompanies us, the one who teaches us to pray the one who's always attentive to the will of the Father and who prays in sighs beyond words. Thank you for this privilege of being able to call you Father, of being able to have Jesus as our Savior. In this time of Lent, Holy Spirit, help us to be more attentive to your will in our lives, to be able to contemplate the face of Jesus not only in the church, not only in the sanctuary, but in the railway station, in the workplace, in the kitchen, in the marketplace. And help us to come to the feet of Jesus like the repentant sinner, not only for our own sins, but for the sins of the world. Help us to grow in intimacy with you, Holy Spirit, with Jesus and with Abba Father. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Royston, thank you so much. And to all of you, dear viewers, uh, there are lots of sounds outside. We thought it was a beautiful location here. And but we carry with us thoughts of this intimacy, you know, either kissing the feet, kissing the hands, kissing the lips. Okay. Whatever it may be. There's two little things that Royston mentioned, kneeling down because he wanted to get close to God, okay? And uh, the second one, you know, the, elevator. the elevator to be lifted up. Whatever it is, if you pray sincerely, God will show you things and ways which are meant for you and for your spirituality. God bless you. Amen.